you're going to have a rare chance tonight to, to hear someone talk about the death penalty from a perspective that you will not hear in any other way. Jim McClendon, uh, who has written this book called Death Work, uh, was raised in Rayford Prison, and he probably knows more about the process of not only capital punishment, but the prison system in Florida and therefore almost the country as anybody I know. And Jim and I go back some time right. when we did a, a documentary inside Rayford, right. and you were our guide right. there. Very quickly, death work has become a smash hit mm -hmm. already, and it's just out this week. Right. Yeah. Why do you think it's so successful, Jim? Well, Other than its brilliant writing. Yeah, we'll, we'll thank, you very much. To that. thank you very much. <laughs> no, it is probably a success in the very pragmatic sense because Gary Gilmore was shot on January the 17th of this year. And after that, that was the impetus. You know, in American life, we need what is known as a hype. So that was the hype. But also, I think that, that's, that's a basic. To build on that, I really believe, and I don't think this is corny, I've been out on a three-week tour now, and every person I've touched base with uh, on these call-in shows on radio, uh, almost 95% of the people who call in and say, we thank you uh, for this book, we thank you for your stand, because I take a hard line against criminals. We thank you for this stand. We feel victimized. Our society is so, so over, it's overpowering us now, and, and we, we feel victimized. We see uh, the Burt Lance fiasco. We see the Watergate fiasco. We see rape. We see murder. Our newspapers are, are horror stories, our TV news stories are horror stories, and we, as the quote, little people, we as the quote, silent majority, we feel powerless. And now someone who has access to the media is actually saying, let's say no to criminals. And that is, of course, what they want to say. So it built on the spectacularization of Gilmore, but I think it, it, it I believe, I'd like to believe that it's feeding uh, a very real hunger in this nation where people are saying, we want to stop criminals. We, we want to say no to the criminal element in this country. When we spent those almost a week at Rayford, yeah. uh, you had a, you had a, a kindredship with the mm -hmm. convicts and right. the guys because you, yeah. you saw them as people yeah. rather than most of us exactly. see them as, as, as So we're not talking about convicts now. We're talking about capital criminals. I was raised by three black, we always had three black murderers in our home. I was raised by murderers. So then you might say, well, my God, you're talking about executing murderers. Well, the vast majority of people who come to prison for rape and murder do not end up on death row. When a person ends up on death row, the court is able, I think, then, and you as a lawyer may, may have an opinion, uh, when, the, when the court assigns this, we fuse the crime and the criminal. We execute both. Now, I know we don't, uh, in our law, we don't take into account we, we're, we're doing something to you for what you've done before, but in a capital case, I think this has bearing. We finally and at last see that there's no hope for this person. This person is so violent, so volatile an individual, be it man or woman, that we as a society can't, can't uh, run the risk of having this person run loose anymore. So is the average rapist, who is a miserable, miserable human being, but is the average rapist, uh, should the average rapist be executed? I, pro I don't believe so. Should the average murder, uh, I don't believe so, because we're talking about definite crimes of passion. You and I get into an argument, uh, uh, and I, I don't like what you're doing. All of a sudden I reach over and kill you. Does that negate my whole, quote, good life? No, it does not. And the law recognizes the that, The law, of too. course, recognizes right. that. And then, so when we're speaking in capital instance, we're speaking of a capital crime. There, again, fusing the crime and the criminal. We're not just talking about one mistake. You know, we're talking about a number of mistakes. So I, I was raised by a, a black murderer. I owe my life to a black convict who saved my life during a riot. Uh, some of the, this is going to sound very incongruous, but it's not when you know human nature. Some of the best people I ever met in my life were convicts I knew at Rayford. Huh. They had made mistakes. I, of course, recognize that 15 percent of people who come to prison are there on a fluke and shouldn't be there and are going to do their time and are going to go out almost like uh, born-again Christians, we'll say, you know. Do you think uh, execution should be public? Yeah, but if you're going to have public execution, also have the crime beforehand. What, you, what people are going to see, uh, and when they, when they watch an execution, I happen to have seen a couple of executions quite by accident, uh, but when I was 17 years old. But uh, so this, the, when you're going to see an execution, you're going to see someone drug into a small room, his head is going to be shaved, his right pant leg is going to be uh, rolled up, and the, the man is going to be scared to death, his eyes are going to be bugged out. You're going to see a couple of big guards sit him in a chair, restrain him, put 16 straps on him. Then you're going to see a death mask come across his face, plate hooked to his head, plate hooked to his leg. You're going to see him come up out of the chair when the juice hits him, 2,300 volts, and whoop, his knuckles are going to break, sputum is going to come out of his mouth, involuntary passage of urine. This is going to be disgusting, terrible. And of course, when you remove the mask, you're going to see the horrible look on the man's face and all this. This is disgusting. It's terrible. 
But if you're going to have an adequate frame of reference for this, let us first see the crime. Uh, let us first see, for instance, a man on death row. I was talking to him recently in Florida, and he, we went basically what I just described to you. Yeah. And I said, well, tell me what you did. And this is a Miami alumnus that did this. And he said, uh, he said well, I, I waited for this man to come out of a restaurant one night. Uh, when he came out, uh, I abducted him, took him out in the woods, tied his hands behind him, made him get down on his hands and knees, and I beat him over the head with a tire iron until part of his head was open. And then I shot him in the back of the head with a shotgun four times and blew his head completely off just so I could commit the perfect crime. So if we're going to see the execution, first let us see the dramatization of the crime so that we are able not only to weep for the criminal, and there are some tears necessary there because we're going to see a human being uh, killed. Extinguished. Let us see the crime first. Let us weep also for the victim. Well, how would you feel if this novel becomes the instrumentality to again outlaw mm -hmm. the death penalty? Would you Fine. Feel, would you feel Fine. unhappy? I will, not, I will not feel put upon. Uh, you see, I have changed myself from a North Florida unintellectual cracker to a semi-intellectual person that I am today. Intellectually, I despise the idea of capital punishment. Intellectually, I, 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 it's, it's repugnant to me. So if, in fact, this were to do away with the death penalty and a better method were to be found, I would think that I had performed a, the ultimate social service. But I don't think it will happen for this simple reason. It is a noble idea to rehabilitate someone, to let someone come back to the fold. It is a noble idea to end capital punishment. But you have two nobles here. When you, and, and noble people espouse these views, noble, liberal, purposeful, forthright people. But when you take these two nobles and you cross the equation with them, you're dealing with ignoble people. You're dealing with good ideas for no good people. The basic person who ends up on death row is no good. We still have these basic words in our, in our language, good and bad. The basic person on death row is not noble. He or she is ignoble. So you have two nobles applied to one ignoble. The equation is out of balance. Do you know is the book being read a lot in prisons around the country? Yeah, as a matter, matter, there is, as matter of fact, there is a, uh, there's a copy on death row and uh, in Florida here. And it's very interesting. Also, Governor Askey requested a copy of this book prior to signing his first death warrant. Oh, really? Yeah, and his lawyer read the book. Now, this was told to me by a newspaper reporter. Yeah. I don't know it for a fact, but, but I know my publishing company sent him a copy of the book. I know, forget when we were in Rayford together, you mentioned, and I'd never heard it before, that when in the old days when someone was going to be executed, they'd say mm -hmm. they're going to write old Sparky. Write old Sparky, right. Uh, and that's all a part of your childhood, and it's yeah. all been transferred to this. And I think another thing, too, in this book is that we and I say we because I took some of my dad's stories in this. You know, he was there for 40 years just as a senior official. And this book also, in a way, details that secret, almost mystical, mythical prison circle of men uh, who are no more. You know, we've got the leisure suit crowd up there now, and they're doing a so-so job. Unfortunately, Florida's one of those penitentiaries where the convicts, you know, have a big hand in their own in their own lives. And I, I'm not so sure that's a good thing. And uh, most old-time convicts are doing time there now have told me, boy, I wish it was like it used to be. I'd wish the administration had total control because my life would be a lot safer. I was out in Texas recently, and they really got them under the thumb out there. And it is much easier to do time. But this book also, uh, in addition to being all, the book takes place in Stark but it, in Rayford, but it goes all over the world. But it also details that, that old time prison system that, that is no more. Well, I, uh, uh, you can tell Jim has a lot to say. Most of it's been said in this book, Death Work, as we've been talking about. It's, I don't know of any other book which really talks about the electric chair and the mm -hmm. death penalty like this one from an insider's view, and I recommend it. Uh, and you can see why you've heard Jim talk. Jim, Thank thanks you very, very much. much. Thank you, Jim. Best of luck to you. Thank you. We'll be right back.